The Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-Earth is the second of the Universes Beyond line from Magic the Gathering. With it comes four pre-constructed commander decks featuring some new cards from the set, as well as some reprints from throughout Magic's history. In this series, we will be going over some of the newer cards from each deck, what reprints are the most exciting, and lastly, we'll be discussing some choice picks to help make the deck more powerful. Elven Council is a blue-green deck led by Galadriel the Elven Queen. The deck is, as the name implies, an elf deck, with a voting sub-theme. The Will of the Council mechanic returns here, where some spells will let players vote for one of two choices, and then the caster of the spell, or the table, depending on the spell, gets benefits based on the results. In addition, we are also introduced to a new variant of the voting mechanic, Secret Council. Spells with this mechanic let players secretly vote for one of the two choices, and at the end of voting, the choices are then revealed. The mechanics feel similar, but there's a lot less publicity and table talk in the Secret Council, hence the name. This Commander Precon deck also comes with a total of six legendary creatures who are all technically able to lead this deck right out of the box, the most of this set's precons. The face card commander is Galadriel Elven Queen, a 4-5 for 4 mana with Will of the Council. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if another elf has entered the battlefield under your control this turn, starting with you, each player votes for Dominion or Guidance. If Dominion gets more votes, the ring tempts you, and then you put a plus one plus one counter on your ring bearer. If Guidance gets more votes, or if the vote is tied, draw a card. This is a pretty unique commander in that the ability will easily trigger on each of your turns. Elf decks are notoriously good at churning out elves, and this deck is no exception. The voting system, at least in Galadriel's case, is tied to the ring temptation mechanic. As a quick refresher, when you were first tempted by the ring, if you do not already control one, you get an emblem named the ring. As the ring tempts you further, you gain the additional abilities from the top of the list to the bottom of the list. These abilities will remain with the emblem for the duration of the game. The ring can tempt you even if you do not control a creature, but if it tempts you and you do control a creature, it must become your ring bearer. When it tempts you, you may choose a new ring bearer or let the current bearer remain such. Our second commander option is Elrond of the White Council, a 5 mana 3 3 elf noble who is the Seeker Council commander. When he enters the battlefield, each player secretly votes for fellowship or aid, and then those votes are revealed. For each fellowship vote, that voter chooses a creature they control to give control of that creature to Elrond's controller. That creature cannot attack its owner. Then, for each aid vote, you put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. This is a very political side of the deck, letting you make alliances at the table, players will loan out their cards to you to help you take down whatever the threat is at the time, and others can choose to simply support you and power up your board. I feel more often than not, aid will be the more popular choice, as even though the loaned creatures cannot attack their owner, this does not apply to the other creatures controlled by that player. Our third commander is Aristor of the Council. This 2-4 elf noble for 3 cares about voting. Whenever players finish voting, each player who voted for the same choice as you creates a treasure token. You scry X, where X is the number of players who voted differently from you. Draw a card. This is not exactly what I would run as the main commander, as its role feels a lot more support to the voting than as a lead. This also gives quite a bit of benefits to your opponents, giving them treasure tokens, making me feel like perhaps this is the weakest choice of the six. Gandalf, Westward Voyager, is a 5 mana, 5-5, five five Avatar Wizard. Whenever you cast a spell with a mana value of 5 or greater, each opponent reveals the top card of their library. If any of those cards shares a card type with that spell, copy that spell, and then you choose new targets for the copy, and then each opponent draws a card. Otherwise, you draw a card. This one is a bit confusing, and it feels almost out of place here among the elf cards, as generally elves are a little lower on the mana curve. This does, however, present a bit of utility in decks with higher curves, and gives added benefit to playing spells that are a bit more mana hungry. Suradan the Shipwright is a 3-4 elf noble for 5 mana with Vigilance. It has Secret Council. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, each player secretly votes for a player, and then those votes are revealed. Each player draws a card for each vote they received, each player who received no votes gets to put a permanent from their hand onto the battlefield. This is actually a very intriguing commander, and as I've learned from the Pirates of the Caribbean's Pirate Court, it is sometimes wise not to vote for yourself. You are drawing a player cards, but if you decide to forego giving yourself card draw, you might be able to use it to cheat cards into play. Lastly, we have Radagast, Wizard of the Wilds, a 3-5 avatar wizard for 4 mana. Radagast has Ward 1, and gives beasts and birds you control Ward 1. Whenever you cast a spell with a mana value of 5 or higher, you create your choice of a 3-3 green beast token or a 2-2 flying blue bird token. I prefer this over Gandalf, though this is both heavily slanted to be on a deck of its own. That aside, let's look at some of the best new cards from this precon. 
Arwen, Weaver of Hope, is a 2-1 for 3 mana that gives each creature entering your battlefield plus 1 plus 1 counters equal to Arwen's toughness. This is reminiscent of Master Biomancer, though it's in mono green. It can be relevant on its own if you do manage to put enough plus 1 plus 1 counters onto her to make your future creatures larger. Legolas Greenleaf is a 2-2 for 3 with reach. He can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. Whenever another legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, you can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on him. Whenever he deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. This is very much at home in a Legendary Matters deck where he can grow huge. I also really enjoy him as a value engine to draw cards, as he shouldn't be too hard to make unblockable. Merkwood Elk is a 6-6 for 6 with Trample. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you can return a target elf from your graveyard to the hand, and then gain life equal to that card's power. This is recursion on a very on-theme body. Six mana would normally be a bit of a turnoff for me, but being that elves hemorrhage mana like nobody's business, this should be relatively easy to get off. Galadrim Ambush is perhaps my favorite new card from this set for my elf decks. It's a four drop instant. It creates X11 green elf warrior creature tokens where X is the number of attacking creatures. Prevent all combat damage dealt by non-elf creatures. This is an amazing design that actually slots into both elf decks and decks like Najila, who want attacking creatures of a specific type. This also protects your elves from any potential blocks, as your damage will go through, but not the non-elves that your opponent might have. Wind Swift Slice is a 3 mana instant. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. Create a number of 1-1 green elf warrior creature tokens equal to the amount of excess damage dealt this way. This gives relevance and value to having big and powerful elves. Elves generally have a few Lord creatures in the deck. This deck has some, as well as some of the plus one plus one counter synergies, making it very easy to get big creatures to use after playing this. As for reprints, this deck does have some pretty awesome ones. Running at the top of the price point is Heroic Intervention. It's an amazing instant that is a staple in any deck running green. Protecting your permanents is crucial if you are in a creature heavy deck, and this ensures that you'll be able to keep them until your next turn. Elvish Archdruid is the only mass mana dork in this deck, but it's still very useful. It gives our elves this anthem effect and a mana production based on our elf count. Elvish Warmaster is a bit of a win condition for this deck, should it morph into an elf ball strategy. You can use that activated ability multiple times per turn, pumping up your team to slam through your opponent's defenses. Genesis Wave is another win con, letting you pump your extra mana into this and potentially flip a good chunk of your library into play. Swan Song is another good one mana counterspell. It deals with a lot of pesky win con cards and giving them a bird token isn't always a bad thing. Asceticism got its first reprint in a while here, giving our creatures hexproof and offering us a regeneration shield should a board wipe be on the table. This deck perhaps is the best mana base of these precons, and it may be because it's only on two colors, but it needs the least amount of upgrades. Flooded Grove, Hinterland Harbor, Rejuvenating Springs, and Vine Glimmer Snarl. See Wizards, you can't put good dual lands into a precon deck without breaking your back. We got a deck with a Battle Bond duel. Good job, Wizards. I hope to see this kind of card quality in the future as well. Now. Let's talk upgrades. This is an elf deck at its core, and for the most part, you could just take a lot of your better elves and just shove them in. Elrond, Lord of Rivendell, is actually my preferred variant of Elrond, as it gives you some repeatable scry off of your elf generation, and it offers you the ring tempting ability. Elven Chorus gives you access to the top card of your library for casting, as long as it's a creature. You also turn all of your creatures into mana dorks, which is especially useful when making multiple tokens. We also can utilize quite a few cards from Magic's past. Edric, Spymaster of Trest, gives you card draw whenever you connect a creature to an opponent, and this can also be used to deter attacks at you. Marwyn the Nurturer is considered one of the best elf commanders, and given our elf generation abilities, it would serve the deck well as an additional mana source. Same goes for Priest of Titania, it's a cheap mana dork that can pump out mana. Azuri, Renegade Leader, is a win con for our elves, letting you channel excess mana into an overrun effect multiple times. Imperius Perfect is an anthem for elves, as low as an ability to create another elf. Circle of Dreams Druid is basically a guy's cradle on a creature, giving you mana for your creature count, rather than how many elves you control. Lissalana Huntmaster gives us an elf whenever we cast an elf spell. Elvish Harbinger lets us tutor for whatever elf we may need at a moment. Wirewood Symbiote lets us untap a mana dork 
Orc to use again should we need extra mana. Allosaurus Shepherd makes our green spells uncounterable and can give each elf we control a 5-5 dinosaur-y body that can be used as a cheap win con. Kurian Ranger works pretty nicely with another card, Ashaya, Soul of the Wild, as an infinite untap outlet. Elvish Promenade and Elvish Ambush both gives us extra elves. This deck has perhaps the highest ceiling of any of these pre-con decks given that elves are one of the oldest and strongest green tribes in Magic. We can add in as many mana dorks as we choose, and we can add in some big mana sinks like Finale of Devastation to win us the game. I would say that we should keep Galadriel as our commander in this deck as her abilities tie in with the elf support and synergy. With that being said, that's going to wrap up our look at the Elven Council pre-con deck. What spicy tech would you want to include in this deck? Let's talk in the comments below. I would love to hear your suggestions. I hope you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like if so. Remember to subscribe for more content like this, and feel free to share this with your friends and playgroup. And as always, thanks for stopping by, I'll see you next time.